Before this video begins, I would like to give a quick thank you to my Asbantium level patrons Fallon Cortez and Nathan Gibson. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Hello everybody and welcome back to another Doctor Who lore video covering Series 1. I already spoke about the Sulathine and other Raxacorcophalopatorians before, but I didn't really go into depth about one of the most important members of the species, Blonde Fell Foch, the villainous Sulathine introduced in Aliens of London and returning later on in Boomtown. Blonde was a fun villain, able to perfectly balance comedy and threat, but her story is actually deeper than her TV appearances make it seem. Expanded Media has given us a glimpse into Blonde's past, her time as Cardiff Mare and her ultimate fate after the events of Boomtown. So I thought I'd explore the rise, fall and rise again of Blonde Felfoch Pasimir de Slothene. And as always, beware spoilers for these stories. Dinner in bondage. For me. Like all Slothene, Blonde Fell Foch was hatched deep underground in a cave on Raxacorcophalopatorius. This was a family tradition of sorts, with the newborns having to burrow their way out to survive against all the odds. She succeeded and then eventually took part in her first hunt at the age of 13, winning in the darkness. Whilst not all Raxacorcophalopatorians were evil, the Slothene were one of the most infamous clans thanks to their criminal practices and black market dealings. Blonde Fell Foch knew any refusal to take part in the family business would lead to her father feeding her two venom grubs. So she joined the Slothene even if her mother tried to kill her multiple times if the tortured audio sync is to be believed. Boomtown seems to imply that Blonde may have been married at some point, although she might just have been referring to Margaret Blaine's husband if she had one. Married or not, Blonde never had any children, but she did have at least two brothers, one of whom was Jacrassa Felfoch, the ringleader of the Slothene invasion of Earth in 2006. Jacrassa became the Prime Minister under the disguise of Joseph Green, until he died. As part of this scheme, Blonfell Foch killed Margaret Blaine, a senior member of MI5, the UK's counterintelligence and security agency. We don't know much about the original Margaret Blaine, but Boomtown implies Blonde killed her personally, and Sink elaborates that Blaine died screaming, with the Slothene then using Blaine's skin to infiltrate MI5 and the UK government as part of her family's plan to destroy the Earth and sell its remains as fuel for starships. Blonde was one of the most hands-on Slothene during the crisis, hunting down Rose Tide and Harriet Jones before taunting the Doctor himself because she enjoyed the hunt that much, gleeful at the smell of fear. However, when the Doctor and Mickey Smith blew up down the street, all the Slothenes seemed to be dead, including Blonde Felfoch herself. However, despite her fellow Slothene conspirators dying, Blonde was actually able to escape by using an emergency teleport, and found herself in a skip on the Isle of Dogs in East London. Still using Margaret's skin suit, Blonde fled to Cardiff, where she was able to get herself elected as Lord Mayor. The Audio 1 rule sheds a bit of light on the leadership struggles just before Blonde became Lord Mayor. In early 2005, the Mayor was a man named Roy Llewellyn, who died during the events of the Autumn Invasion that year, supposedly. Despite the official story being that Llewellyn died during that supposed terrorist attack, he had actually been murdered by the ambitious counsellor Barry Jackson, who was acting on the orders of the Mysterious Committee, a group of powerful aliens who invaded planets for profit. The committee gave Jackson an alien to kill his competition and guarantee his ascension to mayor. However, during this killing spree, Jackson was stopped by tortured one leader, Yvonne Hartman, who forced the mayor to confess to his involvement with the committee, and Yvonne allowed him to live as long as he kept an eye on Captain Jack Harkness and kept a lookout for the potential arrival of the Doctor. However, despite being puppeted by both the committee and Tortured One, Barry Jackson didn't seem to last very long as Blonde Felfosh easily swept a mayoral election later that year thanks to the low voter turnout, believing herself to be the perfect example of the consequences of the people of Cardiff not using their right to vote. The so-called Margaret Blaine became Lord Mayor of Cardiff in 2006 and early on she had an encounter with Tortured Three, specifically Susie Costello. The audio sync sees Blonde investigating a crashed Illyrian spaceship with the aim of using using it to escape Earth. However, Susie was also investigating the spaceship, and the two became bound by control circuit bracelets, similar to the Ninth Doctor and Blonde later on in Boomtown. They both try to kill one another in different ways, but their bracelets can only be disconnected when a rescue pod arrives, forcing them to work together to free themselves and survive war missiles capable of destroying the entire city of Cardiff. After navigating the crisis in their own less than heroic ways, Blonde and Susie agreed to a secrecy pact, Susie protecting Blonde from Torchwood, and Blonde keeping Susie's betrayal of the Illyrians a secret, because you know, Susie sold them out. As they parted, Susie even 
called Blonde her friend, although it's unknown whether the two had any further contacts before Blonde's demise later that year. This event no doubt played a big role in the downfall of Susie Costello, as she became more and more disenfranchised with her job, and her experiences with aliens corrupted her even further. One of Margaret Blaine's main projects as the Lord Mayor of Cardiff was the Blade Druk Project, a proposed nuclear power plant in the heart of the Welsh capital city. As we see in Boomtown, Blonde killed anyone who looked too much into the project or threatened to expose the danger it posed, because she actively wanted an accident at the power plant to combine with the Cardiff Rift and destroy Earth to allow her to escape back into space. This sinister plan highlights the intelligence and cunning of Blondfell Foch, willing to do whatever it takes to achieve her goals, along with her lust for revenge on Earth, a planet she seemed to particularly hate even before the loss of her people. This patient and brutal plan to blow up Cardiff and Earth as a whole almost succeeded when the Doctor attempted to arrest her, with her extrapolator opening the rift through the TARDIS and causing a big earthquake in Cardiff Bay. The episode sees the Doctor take Blonde to dinner to pass the time as he tries to decide what to do with her. Of course, punishments on Raxacorca Fallopatorius were brutal, criminals being lowered into a vat of acetic acid and boiled alive. Whether it was a fear of this fate or genuine remorse, Blonde seemed to be terrified of returning to her native planet, trying to convince the Doctor to spare her by pointing out his own flaws and nature as a killer. However, despite all those claims of innocence and requests for mercy, the repentance was all just an act to get the Doctor to drop his guard, with Captain Jack accidentally activating the extrapolator and causing a big earthquake in Cardiff, only for Blonde's plan to backfire as the device opened the heart of the TARDIS itself, regressing the villain back into to the form of an egg. This essentially killed her and reset Blonde, the Doctor taking her back to her home planet to be reborn to a different Raxacorica Fallopatorian family. Due to her nature as a high-ranking elected official, Margaret Blaine's disappearance after the Cardiff earthquake was reported by UNIT on the 8th of October. However, in the Twilight Streets, Blaine's secretary Idris Hopper claims that the so-called official answer was that the mayor was among the casualties of the earthquake, rather than, you know, having been regressed to an alien egg. Just a side note, Captain Jack Harkness tried to wreck on Idris over dinner, hoping to wipe his memory of Jack and the Doctor, but the pill actually failed, which is apparently something that could only happen to 1 in 80,000 people. The book also mentions that Captain Jack tried to sleep with Idris knowing the secretary wouldn't remember it in the morning, which is a bit, yeah, not sure about the consent boundaries there. Idris ended up helping to decode Billis Manger's diary and successfully retconned himself with a double dose before taking a job in Berlin, where he hopefully didn't work for a giant killer alien wearing a human skin suit. But what happened to Blonde Fell Foch herself after the Doctor returned her home to live a new life? Well, according to Russell T. Davis's The Writer's Tale, the Doctor and Donna would have encountered a young Blonde Fell Foch in the Shadow Proclamation during the events of The Stolen Earth. It would have been revealed that she was adopted by the much nicer and less criminal Jingathene family, taking on the name of Margaret. This scrapped plot thread was actually picked up in the comic A Confusion of Angels, where we find out that Margaret has somehow kept her skin suit and joined the Shadow Proclamation as a detective inspector, since the Shadow Proclamation is basically the Outer Space Police. When we meet Margaret in A Confusion of Angels, she's working with the Jadun, who are led by Captain Nibri, boarding the container ship Jaden, where the 12th Doctor, Bill and Nardole are facing off against Weeping Angels. It's here that we can see just how much Blomfell Foch has changed now that she has been reborn as Margaret Agchris Thera Ford Jingathene. She's a lot more courageous and brave, standing up to the Weeping Angels and even decapitating one with her Raxacorica Fallopatine arm. It's a great story to show how her cunning and leadership abilities can be a powerful force for good now that she's working for the Shadow Proclamation, and she even defends the Doctor from a death sentence, so it's proof that the Ninth Doctor was right to give Blonfell Foch a literal second chance at life. And that's the story of Blomfell Foch, a really interesting villain who was originally only meant to exist in Aliens of London and World War III, but actor Annette Badland impressed Ross T. Davis so much, he wrote Boomtown to include Blomfell Foch again. This gave her a lot more to do, and it's interesting how expanded media has continued to build upon the story of Blonde before and after her time on the show. She went from being a merciless, scheming monster to a determined and heroic champion of justice, which is just a brilliant story of redemption. She may not have 
have the deep backstory of other Series 1 characters like Clive Finch or Henry Van Staten, but Blonde Felfoch is still a really fascinating and multi-layered character who shows that the Slitheen are more than just farting aliens in skin suits, and it's nice that Expanded Media was able to show us that happy ending for the character after her fate was left somewhat unknown at the end of Boomtown. But yeah, that's the story of Blonde Felfoch. I hope you learned something new in this Series 1 lore video, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time as we take a trip to Satellite 5. And as always, bye bye. And I'd just like to quickly thank my Bantium level patrons, Fallon Cortez and Nathan Gibson, my Diamond level patron, Glenna Clark, my Platinum level patrons, Matthew Burns and Maximilian Foreman, and all my Gold level patrons, Boots, Daniel Shilito, Franz Horn aka Lan Vortex, Leigh Marie Farrell, Robert Hock, Spangy Boy, and Thomas R. Thank you so much for your support.